Hi everybody. In this video we have more work to do with logarithms. All right, most of your calculators are going to only have two types of log keys. Uh, one for the common log, base 10, and one for the natural log, uh, base E. Uh, if you're looking for those keys on your calculator, your TI-84 calculator, both the log, L-O-G, and natural log, L-N keys are found above the on key on the far left column. Um, although common logs and natural logs are most frequently used, you may occasionally need to evaluate logarithms to other bases. Um, and to do that, uh, we're going to use the following change of base formulas. So one of our objectives is to um, determine how on our calculator we can uh, evaluate a log expression that doesn't have a base of 10 or a base of E. All right, so we're going to let A, B, and X be positive, positive, can't be negative, real numbers such that A isn't 1 and B is not 1 either. All right, so then the log of base A of X can be converted to a different base using any of the following formulas. Okay, and I want you to pay attention to the fact that right here, X has to be, X has to be a positive number and A um, does as well. All right, um, we can change to base B. Given a log with base A of X, look at the structure here of this fraction. We can take log of x with the new base b and divide it by log of a, the current base, with the new base b. This will become more comfortable to you when we do some problems. But look over here at base 10. Okay, given the same expression, log of base a of x, that would be equivalent to log of x, this x, with base 10, and then log of base 10, the same base 10 here, of the current base of A. It's kind of strange. Look at base E. Taking this same expression that we've had all throughout, okay, we can do a change of base. We can rewrite as a fraction natural log of X. Remember natural log of X is the natural log. It has the base E. Natural log of X divided by natural log of this base A. All right, well, let's see what we're going to do with uh, those change of base formulas. It says rewrite the log logarithm as a ratio of common logs A and B natural logarithms. Okay, so following the formula up above, here's A. Common logs means base 10, so we're going to take and change the base from 7.1 to 10. We'll keep the X, that contain, that's contained in the numerator, divided by, because remember ratio means fraction log base 10, the same base down here, and then we're going to use the base here, 7.1. Alright, B, the B part. Rewrite this as a fraction using natural logs. Easy enough, natural log of X divided by natural log of 7.1. Alright, number two. Same objective. Notice right now my base is 1 fourth. They want me to change the base to base 10. So log base 10 of x divided by log base 10. The subscript is down here, but now the 1 fourth that was a base is now what we call the argument. It's on the same line as log. Okay, let's apply the change of base formula to change this to a natural log ratio or fraction. So natural log of x, or whatever this value is, divided by natural log of the base of 1 fourth. Following the same pattern, same structure, log base 10 of 4 fifths divided by log base 10 of A. To complete the B part, natural log of 4 fifths divided by natural log of A. In all three of these examples right here, when we did the, uh, when we changed it, the logarithm to a common log problem, um, I did input the 10 here, the base of 10 here and 10 here, 
as well here and here, but um, it's not necessary because that's the understood base. So I could have just written log of x divided by log of 7.1. Here I could have just written log of x divided by log of 1 fourth, and likewise, I didn't need the tens here. It's understood to be there if it's not written in, that is if the base isn't written in. So I could have written this log of 4 fifths divided by log of a, okay, but I just went ahead and put them in there. All right, so why do we even want to change? Okay, the bases. Okay, this was just practice in changing the bases using common logs and natural logs, but okay, what good does it do for us? Well, right here in these next three examples, we'll see why. Okay. All right, example four. Okay, we know this means, this log expression means nine raised to what power is four? Okay, well, I, I can't figure out what the exponent needs to be on nine to get an answer of four. And since most calculators don't have a base nine, they only have base 10 or base E, we need a way to find this answer because it's gonna be a decimal on the calculator. A long time ago before we had calculators, we had tables. Okay, but now with the change of base formula, we're able to um, use our calculator to find this answer. So if I'm trying to find this numeric answer, I'm gonna either use common logs or natural logs, do the change of base, then put it into my calculator and figure out what nine's exponent needs to be to get a, a, an answer of four. All right, change of base looks like this. Common log, I'm not gonna write the 10 in, log of four divided by log of nine. Probably the common mistake here that students might make is they interchange the four and the nine in this ratio, this fraction. So just kind of look out for that. All right, so now because I have an LOG button on my calculator, I can go to my calculator, set up a fraction, alpha y equals, okay, and use log of four divided by log of nine. And the result of which to five decimal places Point six three zero nine three. If you don't like the common log change of base formula, you can use the natural log. So the natural log change of base would be natural log of four divided by natural log of nine. You'd go to your calculator, set up a fraction, alpha y equals, access the ln key, ln of four divided by ln of nine, and you'll see the result is returned the same. Do you have to do both? No, just one, whatever your preference is, the common log button or the natural log button. Okay, I encourage you to stop the video, use your calculator, make sure that you're able to produce these answers. If not, we need to be able to troubleshoot why that is. All right, number five. Four raised to what power is this decimal? I have no idea, I can't figure that out mentally. So I need to use the calculator to help me. For me, it's just less writing. I use the natural log change of, change of base. So natural log of the number, or the argument is sometimes what it's called, divided by natural log of the current base of four. Go to your calculator, and then report the result to five decimal places. negative 2.23697. All right, one eighth rate raised to what power is 64? That one probably can be done without a calculator, but since we're practicing, practicing the scale of change, change of base, then we'll go ahead and continue doing that. All right, so natural log of 64 divided by natural log of one eighth. You might want to pause the video, go to your calculator, make sure that you can do the data entry correct. The result should return as a negative two. So if the instructions are use the change of base formula, this is what you do. All right, so we've got some properties of logarithms. Again, the description is let A be a positive real number such that A doesn't equal one, and is a real number. Okay, if u and v are positive real numbers or expressions, then the following properties are true. All right, let's look at the structure of the product property. If I have a log with some base a and I have a product, this is a product right here, two factors, u and v. 
The product property says that I can apply the log with the base A to the factor U, and then I'm going to use the addition sign. So product properties usually have the addition sign plus the log of the same base with the V factor. Okay, this is the common log or just any log, I guess, change uh, product property. Okay, property still holds even for natural logs as well. So the log of a product is equal to the sum of the individual logs. Okay, the quotient, quotient dividing property. Notice that I have a log of a quotient, u divided by v. When you usually deal with quotient properties, you usually have the subtraction sign. So if I have a fraction, then it's going to be log with base a of u, start with the top, minus the log of uh, base a of the denominator v. And um, this is just the version of the natural log quotient property. Okay, and the third property, okay, it's called the power property, and it's sometimes called the constant multiple property. Constant multiple. Okay, notice the structure of what's going on here. You have log base A of U, some expression with an exponent on it. The property says that this is equivalent to, this log expression would be equivalent to taking this exponent N and just moving it in front as a constant multiplier, hence the constant multiple phrase. Okay. And likewise, I could go the, the opposite of that. If I have n in front as a constant multiplier, I can take and move its uh, position up to the exponent position on this u argument. And then, of course, here is the natural log version of the power property. So you're just actually shifting this exponent back and forth, okay, if it, if it applies and you need to do so. Okay. All right, so on the back of this worksheet, we're going to be using these properties. So... Let's see what they're asking us to do. Use the properties of logs to expand the expression as a sum, difference, or constant multiple. So the sum would require the product property, the difference would require the quotient property, constant multiple would require the power property. All right, use the properties of logs to expand. We're not solving. Use the properties of logarithms. So by inspection, look at number one. You have three properties that you can draw from. Okay, I don't see a fraction, so it can't be the quotient property. I don't see an exponent, so it's probably not going to be the power property. But I do see a product. I see the factor of 10 and the factor of x. So I'm going to apply the product property. So I'm going to keep log base 10. The first factor is 10 plus, and then give the other factor x its own log as well, log base 10 of x. If we left this problem and moved on, we really haven't simplified because by um, looking at this first term, I can do that one mentally, simplify that one mentally. 10 to what power is 10? 10 to what power is 10? Well, 10 to the first power. So this whole term simplifies to 1. I can't simplify this term right here because I don't know what x is. So I just bring it down as part of my answer. So we applied the properties, but we also noticed that we could simplify this log expression. All right, number 2. All right, well, the What's visible to me is that I have a fraction, so I'm thinking the quotient property. So log base 10 of the numerator. Quotient means to subtract. Log base 10 of the denominator. Without a calculator, I don't know what that is because I don't know what exponent needs to belong to 10 to get me an answer of 8. I could do the change of base on it and use a calculator, but if I didn't have a calculator, I would have to leave my answers like this. And the objective in these problems anyway is just to apply the properties. Okay, But if I notice I can solve one of the terms by hand without a calculator, then I'll do so. Otherwise, I won't. Okay, look at number three. Okay, focus our attention on this argument right here. I don't see a product. 
of two different factors. I don't see a quotient. I see a power. I'm thinking the power property or the constant multiple property, which tells me that I can move the 4 as a constant multiplier in front, leaving the x here or the base with that power. I can't do anything else, so I'm done. I'm accomplishing the objective of um, using the log properties. All right, number four. Well, again, you have three properties. The power property, I don't see factors. I don't see a quotient, and I don't see a power. However, I know that the square root can be rewritten as a one-half fraction exponent. So I'm going to do a rewrite on this first before I can apply the properties. I just put a little dash through my z. So instead of writing it as square root, I'm going to say it's z to the one-half power. Now the visual is, hey, that's the power property because I have an exponent. What does the property allow me to do? Move the one-half in front as a constant multiplier. All right, number five, the natural log. The properties still apply to the natural log functions too. So I see a product, not a quotient, not a power. I see three factors. So that means I'm going to break this into three terms. Nothing else can be done, so I'm finished. And problem six, I have some factors, I have some powers, I don't have a quotient. Looks like I'm going to be able to use multiple or a couple of different properties. To start with, let's go ahead and use the product property and then we'll deal with the power property. So log base six of a plus, okay, a is a factor, b cubed is a factor, log base six of b cubed c to the negative 2 is a factor, so another plus log base 6 of c to the negative 2. Sometimes we can uh, apply multiple properties and for these last two terms notice that they both have a power on the argument, so we're going to be able to apply the power property. So this first term is just going to come down, we're done with it, there's no more properties that we can apply. But for this one we're going to shift the 3 in front as a constant multiplier. Likewise, move the negative 2 in front, so this returns as minus 2 log base 6 of c. So the objective is to apply as many properties as you can to expand this expression. It's not real pretty because you're making the answer look a lot bigger, but that's what the objective is. Okay, These last three are going to be a little bit more involved because you can see that the argument is a little more complicated looking. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that cube root and I'm going to take it off and I'm going to change it to a one-third exponent. So the cube root is equivalent to the one-third power, but I still have this quotient in here. All right, so I, I can see the power property and I can see the quotient property. I don't see the product property. I see the quotient and the power. Well, which one should we do first? Well, this one-third is locking everything down here, so let's take care of the power property first. So move the one-third to the front, then we can deal with this quotient. All right, we're not done. I can use the quotient property. Okay, remember this one-third is going to be applied to everything. So one-third times, let's apply the quotient property, natural log x to the fourth minus natural log of y cubed. Okay, we're not done. We, we have some power, so let's apply the power property again. So actually we're applying the power property twice, once at the beginning and once at the end. Right. We have the natural log of a quotient. I see some powers, so I'm thinking quotient and power property again. 
Okay, in this example, compared to the last one, notice that I don't have an exponent on the outside of this quotient, so I can jump right into first applying the quotient property. So natural log of the numerator minus natural log of the denominator. Okay, the numerator has multiple terms, so we must put the numerator in a set of parentheses. Minus natural log x cubed. So this expression came from this fraction. Okay, when I look at this term right here, I can't apply any more properties. This is not a product, this is not a quotient, and the power is just on x, it's not on the outside. So this term is just going to come down until I address this situation. This is the power property. Bring the 3 in front, and then we're finished. All right, let's take a look at this last one. Seems the most complicated. So I have a quotient. The quotient property is going to be applied. I have a power, okay, a couple of powers, the power property, but I also have a product in the numerator of x to the fourth and the square root of y. So if you look at this, we have a quotient, we have a product in the numerator, and we have powers. I'm going to apply all properties. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of the square root, though, and make it an exponent. Let's do a rewrite on this. x to the fourth times y to the one half, that's a one half, divided by z to the fifth. Okay, now we're ready for the log properties. Okay, so what do we do first? Well, I'm thinking we're going to do the quotient first, and then we'll, we'll go from there. I don't see a power on the outside. I wouldn't probably want to jump right into the product. Okay. log of the numerator minus log of the denominator. We still can apply some properties here. I'm going to do the product property and then the power property. So the product property has a plus in between the individual logs. So log base b of x to the fourth plus log base b of y to the half. minus. Uh, I'm over here now. I can go ahead and bring the 5 in front using the power property. But I still have two exponents here and I can apply the power property two more times. So look back at the original problem and look at the result of taking all properties that are available to us and applying those properties to this log expression and expanding it. So expand just means increase your answer. All right, so we used log properties. Oh, I see where we're at with time. So these last few problems down here will have to be done in the next video. So see you then.